think it's going to be an enjoyable time. So if you'd like to come and meet some of the people in our area who um, are Spanish-speaking that are looking for a church, uh, Pastor Dario told us that he and a, a junior uh, were, went in hutch for something. They stopped at La Fiesta to eat, and they asked the gal at the desk if, she could, if he, they could put that poster up, and she was totally excited about a church in McPherson. She even went to Salina the next day to get five more posters so that she could put them up. So I'm guessing um, there's 40, 45 of us here today. I'm guessing there's going to be more of them here this evening at 5 o'clock. So if you don't come, stop and pray for them to have the Lord in our presence and a good service. So much for that. Uh, Tuesday, Youth Bible Study. Wednesday evening, Adult Bible Study. Thursday is a Christian Ed Board. If you're on that board, please, 7 o'clock Thursday evening. Saturday, man, is Huddle for Men, first Saturday in May. We're, not, we're going to make May baskets. And, no, we're not either. <laughs> not either. We're just going to listen to Gary's stories and have good food and, and a time of devotion. Next Sunday... Paul Carlson uh, partnership. We've been collecting our change. Hopefully everybody has been. If you'll bring your change next week, if you don't have it in a soup can, um, I'm bringing mine in a Ziploc bag with a deal folded up in it. Bring it however you collected it, and we'll have a time of dedication for that offering. Uh, if you fill out, oh, I forgot. If you fill out the register and pass it back so we can uh, have that uh, records. Birthdays this week. Echo Clark Pavlovich on the 3rd, and Quinn Brewer on the 4th. A couple of those young people. We just need to get excited about the Lord. Let's turn in our bulletins as we move to a time of worship, and let's read the uh, call to worship together. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, Dan and Jill represented New Gotland Covenant Church at our annual conference meeting in Denver this week and if I'd have had the picture I would have had it up here but uh, the uh, ministerium from the conference have to approve Dan to uh, continue on to be ordained in the covenant church and have a picture of I'll show it next week I've got it now <laughs> of uh, Dan being prayed for and accepted and he says as long as he doesn't do anything really bad between now and June, he will be officially and a covenant pastor. Let's give him a hand. I know it's been a lot of work. He's done a lot of study, written a lot of papers. He probably felt like he was still back in college. But, okay, now let's move to the call to worship as we move to a time of worship. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Yes, we are quite proud of you, young Dan. Appreciate you. And we appreciate you coming back. <laughs> you know, that's a good thing, you know. So, yeah, we, you can't go anywhere anymore. It was my cousin, Shelly, and her husband who were out there, and uh, there's people everywhere. You know, somebody will know someone, got a picture of you. It's a great shot. So. And, uh, and Lee and I, wanna, we want to... Apologize in advance of anything we may say or do. <laughs> right now, you know. What, yeah, we're coming up. What are you talking about? Well, nothing. I, I'm just saying. Okay, this is my father's world, and I'm certainly glad of that. Uh, and uh, we are going to sing that one first. We'll sing 58 in your hymnal. Uh, this is my father's world. Just stand and sing. That's a great song. This is my father's world. 
glad to my listening ears All nature sings and round me rings The music of the spheres This is my father's world I rest me in the thought Of rocks and trees, of skies and seas His as the wanderers rock this is my father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in love that's fair, in the rustling grass I hear. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. The battle is not. Jesus who died shall be satisfied and then will heaven be won. Bow with me in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning to celebrate you, to thank you for letting us be in your world today, Lord. Help us to uh, glorify your name and all that we say and do and, and uh, that we can praise you in our words and our actions, Lord. Thank you for everyone that's here today. Bless us as we hear your message. Be with us as we share a meal and, and fellowship together, Lord. Just be among us and, and show us that you're here and, and, and that you care for us. We ask this in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Hymn number two, which is easy to find, right there in the front, if you want to go off the book. We're going to sing that one first, and then we'll sing four, uh, 544 right after that. Come thou found of every blessing. That's our first one. Come thou found of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loud praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it, name of God's redeeming love. Hitherto thy good bless me, thou hast brought me to this place. And I know thy hand will bring me safely to my good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fields of God. He who rescued me from danger, brought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how dead a better I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. We'll understand it by and by. That should be my theme song sometimes, 544. 
Okay, I'll understand it by and by. 544. <laughs> Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Bung and bung, when the morning comes, when the saints of God story how we've overcome we will understand it better by and by oft our cherished plans have failed disappointments have prevailed and we've wandered in the darkness heavy hearted and alone but we're trusting in the lord and according to his word we will understand it better by and by by and by when the morning comes when the saints of god have gathered home we will tell the story when we've overcome we will understand it better by and by temptations hidden snares Take us unawares, and our hearts are made to blaze the judges were thrill. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. By and by when the morning comes, when the saints of God have gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by that's good to know well good morning everyone it's good to see you all here and I'm really glad to be back too there was a point yesterday as we were uh, coming out of Colorado, we were still at some altitude and it was pouring down rain and went through a puddle and sort of hydroplaned a little bit. The car started to go a little bit sideways and fortunately it wasn't that long of a puddle and we came out of it and straightened out okay. I slowed down after that and then a whole bunch of rain or snow came and there was slush on the road and I'm going, you know, like 55, 60 and people are zooming by. And uh, another couple miles down the road, we were zooming by them <laughs> in, the, in the median in the ditch. I didn't, I didn't laugh at them or anything. I felt sorry. Nobody was hurt. It was just going off the road kind of stuff. But uh, we were thankful to be here after that. And I wondered if, you know, if it kept up, would we spend another night in Colorado or not? Um, but, yeah, we made it fine. Thank you for sending Jill and I as delegates from this church. We had a great time. Uh, there, especially the first time, no, maybe second time for Jill to go and meet all of the different people, a lot of new faces. i um, been there a few times, so I'm getting on to it. But we have five states represented in our Midwest conference. Kansas is one of them. Can anybody name another one? Colorado. Colorado. Nebraska. Nebraska. Iowa. Iowa. There's one more. Hawaii. Hawaii, <laughs> no, no, no. Missouri, parts of Missouri. And there also is a picture of uh, Wyoming on the map, but evidently there aren't any covenant churches there. So we just say those five states. Um, 86 churches are in the conference. And uh, of those 86 churches, 39 of them sent delegates as representatives, which, you know, it'd be great if it was 100%. That's only about 50% or less. But still, that's a good... Uh, turnout considering a lot of them are little rural churches that they just have a hard time and of course you know Denver may be a long way away from where they are. Um, we had a financial report on the conference and this last year just so you get an idea of their budget 
for everything, office, salaries, ministries, and everything is about $800,000. And um, we contribute to that. Our church sends in a, an allotment that we have. And they said that of all the churches, only about 75% of them actually send in their money to the conference office to help with the work that they're doing. But the conference office does do a lot for us. They do a lot for me as a minister. They have uh, special times when we get together and encourage one another and pray together. Um, and if our church ever runs into difficulties, I know, I think in the past here, I've heard there have been times when the conference has sent people to step in and help us get through those challenging times. So they do that as well. And we've got 89 churches now. We're 86 churches. We're planting two new churches. One of them, Jill, Jill and I weren't sure if we heard it exactly the same, <laughs> but it's happening this summer. One of them is already kind of going, and one of them is going to have a launch in September. So by the end of the year, we'll have two more churches. One of them is in Omaha, Nebraska, and the other is in Olathe, Olathe Kansas. And there's another one that I heard about last week that probably will kick in next year in Manhattan, Kansas. We don't have a covenant church there, and so we're going to have one coming up. Um, as Lee mentioned, uh, I was in the, on the stage a bit, both at the ministerium and at the conference, and people heard about New Gotland Church. But it wasn't just through me. Um, Dario, Reverend Pastor Dario and Rosa, were on the platform too. At one point, they were honoring the Spanish-speaking pastors who were there in their churches, and they had them up on the platform, and some of them spoke English, but most of them spoke Spanish with translation. And good old Dario was talking about how things are going in Salina. And then he said, and we're starting a new church in McPherson at New Gotland Covenant Church. Dan Perry, stand up. And of course, everybody's going, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I absorbed it for you. I'm giving it back to you all. But I don't know if they've heard that much about New Gotland before, but they sure heard about New Gotland this year. And so be proud in a happy way. Not, not in a proud way, but in a happy way. And then they also had uh, people there with various offices that they represented at the conference level. And I talked to the one that's called National Covenant Properties. I believe that's what it's called, National Covenant Properties. And they're the people that help churches finance building programs or finance rebuilding programs, if that's what you need. And they also come in and help with the, the planning stage. And they will send consultants. We could have someone come and look at our church and tell us from a fresh perspective how it looks for someone who is coming here for the first time. Can they find the restrooms and do they, do they feel comfortable? And, and there are things that we can do to make it more appealing and opening, or feeling, open feeling to do people coming. And so they do great work. And if you happen to have some money laying around that you want to invest in something good, they're paying 4.5% interest right now to help build churches. So you're helping build God's kingdom, and you're also looking to the future. It's not FDIC insured, but they do have strict accounting guidelines that they follow. So I guess that's my report on conference. Was there anything, Jill, that you want to jump up and say? <laughs> no. <laughs> I may have forgotten something, but she'll tell me later. <laughs> I don't blame you. So, okay, well, anyway, I just wanted to let you know, and there's another one coming up next year in Kansas City. If you want to go get some good barbecue and look at fountains and, and fellowship, it's the really neat thing is we fellowshiped with people from all over the place, all these different churches, pastors and lay people that were there as delegates and a great time of fellowship over food and in the services. We heard some great messages, so... I encourage you to think about being our delegate. It doesn't have to be me and Jill all the time. So. All righty, well, let's, let's go to prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for making us part of your family. Thank you that we here in New Gotland, at this church, whether we come from New Gotland or other places around the county or outside the county even, you bring us together as brothers and sisters in Christ, not just on Sunday morning, this is kind of the high point of the week for a lot of us, but 
throughout the week, we pray for one another and encourage one another and help one another when we know of needs. Thank you for that. And especially, we thank you that you, God, are our Father. You are our Father. You are the one who brought us into being. You are the one who knew us from before we were even conceived. And in your book is written all the days of our lives. And Lord, you are working for good in our lives, even though we go through difficult times and in good times too. And we thank you for that. We praise you, Lord. We think of people that are going through difficult times because of the weather we had the last day or so and these tornadoes that have caused so much destruction in places around about our area and in our state and, and other states nearby. We pray that you would be with those who have lost everything and those who are there to help them and others who have lost some and are dealing with recovery from that. Bless them and encourage them. We pray that you would bless our denomination at the national level, international level, and also our Midwest Conference. And thank you for how we are like a, a cord of three strands. We are strong and we strengthen one another as we pull together. And Lord, we thank you for the La Miel Church coming this afternoon and doing this new Spanish service and establishing the beginning steps of establishing a Spanish-speaking church here in McPherson area. We just pray your blessing on this first service as we come together and on the others to follow. May you be glorified and may many people who have been longing for a service in their own native home heart language, Spanish, that they would be able to come together and fellowship together. And thank you that we can be a part of that. We pray that you'd be with Jennifer Henry and her uh, her. Uh, kidney situation with the cysts and the kidney stones. We pray that you'd bring healing to her, and as she gets treatment for it this week, may it go well. And we also pray for her brother-in-law, Lord, who's recovering from a stroke. We ask that your touch would be on him. Thank you that he's doing better than he was. We pray for the family of Cheryl Branstead and her passing, as she was a part of this church years ago. We just ask your blessing on them as they go through the grieving process and also as they celebrate for her being with you. And Kathy Becker's sister Mercedes with cancer, bring healing there and reconciliation as needed. We pray for Freddie Brewer, Bryce's father, in hospice care. Be with him and comfort him and direct his days. And Edward King too, as he has got a lot of uh, troubles, has had the bad fall and is hospitalized and his wife Barbara is standing beside him helping him. May she be encouraged as well. And Janice, Chris's friend, and um, thank you, Lord, that her tumors have shrunk recently, and good news for a change for her. Continue to bless her and help her. And Lisa Hunru, as she works in the Omega House, is a, is a guide to others, and sometimes as a fence that holds them in place, give her strength and wisdom and love and grace. And Vern, as he uh, deals with higher PSA readings and what that means, and Gloria, give her strength and joy. And Jerry, as she continues to heal from the surgery. And Shauna, this friend of Diana Larson, who uh, has recently had some setbacks. We pray your blessing on her. And Lord, each one of us here, we, we've come uh, today together with joy, but also some of us with pain as we're dealing with broken relationships or financial hardships we might be going through or sickness um, that we're having. Some of us aren't here because of that. We pray for your, your help in those areas, Lord. You are the great physician, the mighty counselor, and the source of all good. So we pray for these people. And now we take a few minutes to lift before you our unspoken requests. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. We will song, uh, sing next a song that's very pretty. I always thought this was a pretty song. Uh, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's quite a story behind it, too. So remain seated. We'll sing this one.
would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do No one never cared for me like Jesus There's no other friend so kind as he No one else could take the sin and darkness from me much he cared for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me, and he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Love says something to see his blessed face above. Who never cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. How much he cared for me. Isn't that a pretty song? Uncle Charles and I used to sing that as a duet, and that's what I think I was still trying to do. I was singing tenor, tenor notes and, and a different beat, but you, you hung in there and played it right. So, <laughs> it's a pretty song. Hey, Gary, I'm going to put you on the spot. Your name, go ahead, you can sit down. <laughs> but your name came up at this conference, and you were talking about Charles just now. Um, somehow I was talking with some other folks about him and how when I visited him, I can quote a Bible verse, or begin quoting a Bible verse, and he will finish it. You know, he may not know who I am, and he may want to go milk the cows every five minutes. Um, but someone said, you know, music is really powerful with people in that situation. And I said, well, I know just the man who always talks about singing with him in church. So next time we go down to Mound Ridge to visit, you can come along and you and Charles can sing, if you would. <laughs> so, now I said it in front of everybody else, I guess we better follow through. <laughs> uh, but I won't get the calendar out just now, we'll, we'll do it later. Well, as we get ready to worship the Lord in giving, I would like to call your attention to an uh, unusual passage for giving passages, but it's a song of praise or a psalm of praise to God and his blessing on us. It's Psalm chapter 1 and verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Ushers, would you come forward, please? There you go. Lord, we thank you so much for how you have blessed us, Thank you for guiding us to yourself and helping us to seek you. We pray your continued blessing. And Lord, out of gratitude to you, we return a portion to you for the building up of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
please stand as we sing together freely, freely. seated except for young folks come on up I have a children's message a young people's message for you <laughs> thank you ladies <laughs> here we go here's some other young people okay well you see what I did here I got a bunch of thumbtacks and I punched them through this index card and I taped them on so they're real solid so if any of you aren't paying attention during the children's <laughs> time, I can just whack you on the leg. <laughs> Do not. That would hurt, wouldn't it? Yes. You want to feel these? Just, just real careful. They're, they're, they're sharp. Is that pretty sharp? You want to feel it? When you touch it lightly, it doesn't spasm. When you, it doesn't yeah, really when you touch hurt. it lightly. I just That's want you to know they're genuine, genuine thumbtacks. I haven't dulled them or anything like that. <laughs> Somebody accused me of that one time. It, it was... No, but uh, yeah, but more pressure. What will happen if you press really hard? It will just get stuck in your head. Yeah, and it's got all kinds of germs too. You'd have to go get a tetanus shot maybe. <laughs> well, what do you think will happen if I put a balloon blown up on there? It would pop. It'll pop. It'll go boom. Right? I practiced this this morning and helped wake James up. <laughs> <laughs> Three different pops he heard. <laughs> That's why I had to practice. <laughs> you think so? You're ready. It's gonna pop. Yeah, well. Oh, it's one of those magic tricks, Steve, where it doesn't pop. You think? Maybe. Uh, I want to tell you a story that goes along with this, though. I heard this a while back, but there was a man who was uh, an ambassador to some South American country, a U.S. ambassador, and he had a very devout Christian father. And this Christian father was all about Jesus, 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 which is good. But they had an ambassador from that South American country come to America. And as part of what they were doing, this ambassador introduced his father to this ambassador from, I don't know what country it was, maybe Brazil or somewhere. And his father said, how are you? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? And his the son, the ambassador, like, oh, no, no, Dad, don't want to say that. You can't be asking people about that kind of stuff. And the, the Brazilian ambassador, he just kind of <laughs> laughed a little bit, and, and they went on. Afterward, the son got after his father and said, you shouldn't have done that. And his father said, I needed to do that. I know it was kind of taking courage for me to do that. It was a hard thing to do, but I felt like God wanted me to do that. Sometimes God wants us to speak up like that, too, when we're in situations. And it's kind of scary it's kind of like putting a balloon on the tax. And we're thinking it's going to pop, it's going to pop, it's going to pop. But when God is blessing us and helping us with it. <laughs> Are you ready? Ah, no. no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to really do it this time. Ready? Let, let, let's, let's see what happens. No pop. Okay, I'll push harder. Is it going to pop? No. Push harder. Isn't that amazing? Well, <laughs> about, that's about where I stop. <laughs> or to wake James up. <laughs> um, you know, God will ask you to do things that seem like they're going to just not going to come out good at all. But he helps you when you're doing it. And you know, that ambassador went back to his home country. And he wrote a letter to the father that spoke to him. And he said... I thank you very much. I was so happy to meet you. And you're the only man in America that asked me about how my soul was. Thank you for doing that. And so when we follow God's prompting and, you know, he tells us to be courageous witnesses, he takes care of us and he brings it out for good. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you do take care of us and that you guide us and 
And sometimes it takes a lot of courage on our part to lay down on the thumbtacks or whatever it is and to do what you put before us to do. But you bless us in that. We pray your blessing on these young folks and on all the rest of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hurt my finger one time doing it. You press down really hard and suddenly it's gone. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. (laughs) Well, today's message is our last one in 1 Thessalonians. We're finishing it off. And it's a little bit shorter because I knew we were going to be running a little bit late at this point because I spent so long talking about the conference. So don't worry, we'll still get... They'd be able to eat before the food all burns in the kitchen <laughs> on the warmers. But the, uh, the passage today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 28. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 28. And they're on the screen. I gave these to Lee this morning, kind of late, but he got them. Would you all please stand as I read? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for me, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And you may be seated. Well, this is Paul finishing up his words to the Christians in Thessalonica. And he's written a whole bunch to them about how they should live as Christians. And he's finishing it up. And there's a, when you get to the end of something like this, there's just a few things that you want to say to make sure they don't forget. When I was a teenager, my, one of my grandmothers, well, actually both of my grandmothers lived with us for a while. And the one, every time that I was going out somewhere in a car, she'd say, now, Danny, you be careful and don't have a car accident. People get hurt in those. And I'm like, yes, Graham, I know. (laughs) I'm not going to do that. But every time she'd say that. Because she knew, she told me lots of things over my life, lots of good wisdom she'd imparted, stories she told me that taught me things about life. But she knew that it was important that that day I did not go out and have a car wreck. And that's kind of what this, what Paul is doing here. It's stuff that, I don't know if the Thessalonians are saying, yeah, we know that, Paul, or not. But he's reminding them of these things because they are very important. And they're very important for us as well. The first one, he says, is rejoice always. And this is no matter what the circumstances are. No matter what comes your way in life, this still applies It doesn't always make sense, but we can rejoice in God and trust him. Lee Strobel wrote about this. He said, if there were two angels in heaven and God called them over and said, all right, you, Gabriel or whatever, Michael, I want you to go be in charge of the largest kingdom on earth and take care of that kingdom and make rules for them and be their their guardian angel. And then the other one, he says, I want you to go down and sweep the streets in Galva, Kansas. It would make no difference to either angel which job they were assigned. In our eyes, you know, being in charge of the great nation is much more important than sweeping streets. But they would both be happy. It wasn't a matter of, wasn't so much a matter of what they were doing, but the real joy comes in being obedient to God, whatever he tells you to do, whether it's sweeping streets or doing something really important as far as responsibilities go. So for a Christ follower, the important thing isn't what God has us doing. 
The important thing is that we're doing what God wants us to do. Okay, second phrase there, pray continually. This, this doesn't mean never do anything but pray. You can't get off your knees and do anything. You've got to pray all the time, every, every minute you're awake. That's not what it means. It means go throughout your daily life with the attitude of the presence of God with you. When things are going well, give him thanks. Like um, <laughs> another time, was it Friday evening, we were driving over to the church. And they have a whole bunch of those, those traffic circles there and, and lots of cars, busy ones, and lots of lanes. And you're not, I'm never sure which lane I'm supposed to be in. And I don't want to get off here, but I want to get off there. And Anyway, I was kind of drifting over, getting ready to get off, and I heard, <laughs> sure enough, there was a car right there that I would have, you know, sideswiped if I'd continued over. After I got over the shock of the horn and got back where I'm supposed to be, I thanked the Lord that, you know, we didn't have an accident. We were fairly close to it. Um, that's the attitude of prayer. Or when, in, when you run into problems, just ask God, no matter what it is you're doing, ask him to help you figure it out or to help you see what it is that you're not seeing. Or when you're feeling frustrated or irritated. Now, I, I, I never get irritated myself, but I know some of you probably, <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I wrestle with this one a lot too. When you're feeling frustrated or irritated, just stop. And ask God to help you deal with that. And sometimes it means a matter of you readjusting your thinking about this, whatever it is that's got you irritated. But he will do that. When someone shares something that's happy for them, be happy with them and thank God. This kind of being with God comes from habitually taking some time at the start of your day or at the end of your day or at both to to spend time in prayer with him. Go over the things in your day. Sometimes, sometimes you have to repent of things that you said or did. Or sometimes you can rejoice in the good things that you said or did or that happened during the day. And sometimes you just need to ask God to give you grace when that comes up again. But spend time with him. And remember who you are in Jesus. You are an eternal new creation. If you are in Christ Jesus and you are on a trajectory to live forever. The point of living is not the success that we have in life, not the money we make or how well our jobs go or what we do for a living. But the point of su the success is being in relationship with God. There's much more going on than what is visible. And then the next instruction is give thanks in all circumstances, all circumstances. Why should we give thanks? Um, maybe even a bigger question than that is how can we give thanks in all circumstances? Say you're running late for some appointment or a meeting or for school or something, and you're driving along and you got a flat tire, so you pull over to the narrow berm on this busy road and you get out and the rain's coming down and you go around to your trunk and you open up and start scrounging around trying to find the jack for your car and the spare tire and you hope there's enough air in the spare tire that it'll still work and you say thank you lord for this flat tire on this rainy day on this busy road that's kind of hard to do isn't it well i don't think it's asking us to do that um or when someone's sick someone that you really care about and they're maybe really sick and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, you might say, thank you, Lord, that you might heal this person, or that if worse comes to worse, they're with you. But even then, it's kind of hard to be thankful that that person is sick. Well, this verse doesn't say, be thankful for everything, does it? I looked in multiple translations, and none of them say, be thankful for every circumstance. Do your Bibles say that? If you have one, open. No, it doesn't. It says, be thankful in all circumstances. And there is a difference. This thankfulness is not a celebration like, oh, things are so good. My team won the Super Bowl. Not that kind of thankfulness. This thankfulness comes from a deep down trust in God that he really does have you and your life and all your concerns in his hand and is working the best for you 
in all things, even the painful things. You can calmly say, yes, Lord, thank you, that even in this circumstance, you are working for my good. There's nothing that comes your way that God didn't already know about from the beginning of time and have a plan for it in your life, even the painful things. Sometimes they're to knock us back on course when we've gone astray. And sometimes they're just to deepen our patience and our trust in God. And he's got other purposes too. A lot of them we're not going to be able to figure out this side of heaven. When we get there and we look back, I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known, it says in 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm looking forward to that day. A lot of questions will be answered then. And God knows firsthand what our pain is. Jesus was rejected by the people he came to save. His closest friends that he'd gathered around and they'd traveled together and told a lot of jokes together and a lot of stories and done hard things together, they all abandoned him when he needed him the most. He was tortured and slowly killed on a cross. He knows how this world hurts us so much sometimes. And Psalm 56, 8 reminds us that he collects all your tears in a bottle. Everything that you go through, each one of your sorrows is recorded in his book. So when you're suffering, when you're in pain, you're not alone. God has been through it and he is with you in it at this time. And then verse 19 says something really important for us. Do not quench the spirit. Now, a literal translation of this verse is stop putting out the spirit's fire. When the Holy Spirit filled the disciples in the upper room after Jesus had ascended to heaven, they were waiting there in Jerusalem. And and after a week or so, the, the Holy Spirit came down and says there was this mighty rushing wind. We know what those are. But then there were tongues of fire that came and hovered over everybody. The Holy Spirit was symbolized, literally in this situation, by fire. Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, one of the greatest ones, or most well-known ones. um, Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest. (laughs) But anyway, Isaiah, he was taken up to see God in this vision in, is it chapter 5 or chapter 6? And he's there before God, he sees the throne and the angels all around, and he says, "Uh uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. Woe is me, for I am a man of sinful nature. My people are sinful, and I am sinful. I cannot stand in the holy presence of God. And an angel took a pair of tongs and went to the altar of fire and took a coal off of the fire and touched it to his lips. And this was in a vision, so it didn't just you know, incinerate his face. It just it cleansed him. And this is the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. So don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't harden yourself against what the Holy Spirit is doing in you and around you in the world. We can resist the work of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't force us to do anything. But he does come to us and gently urge us. And when we listen, the more clearly we hear him. But what he does for us is for our good and for his glory. And when we die, and when we stand before God, like Isaiah did there, God who sees everything and knows everything, anything not purified by the sacrifice of Jesus will be burned up. Receive him now as a cleansing and empowering fire within you, or face him later as a consuming fire. And then in verse 20, he gives us a warning. He says in verse 19, don't quench the spirit. But in 20, he says, test everything. Don't scoff when someone says, oh, God told me this. And they tell you something. Or when someone's teaching or preaching from God's word and they're saying, this is what this is saying to us. Don't scoff, but listen. And in verse 21, it says, test what they're saying. Some claim that they are speaking the word that God has given them. But that doesn't guarantee that it is so. Satan is a master of disguise and a master of deceit. And I know for a fact that people will say things like this, God told me to do this, and it wasn't so. 
There was the Christian stripper. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. <laughs> God told me. I've got this beautiful body to share. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's not from God. He wouldn't do that. I saw that on the news a while back. Well, quite a while back. But um, we got to test it. Does it fit with the word of God? Is it so? If someone comes and says, well, I've got a special understanding of this passage in Scripture. People have got it wrong for the last 2,000 years, but I have it because God showed me, and this is what it is. Well, listen carefully when someone says something like that. Don't scoff, but listen and compare it with the rest of the Word and see if it fits into the whole because we allow, we allow the Bible to interpret the Bible, and that's why we don't take certain passages out of context and, and do what they say. We allow the whole Bible to make sense. You heard the story about the guy that used to like to, God, give me some guidance. He flipped the Bible open and point to a verse, and he'd take it out of context. Well, he did this one time, and, and he pointed, and, and Judas went and hanged himself. <laughs> what? So he said, I'll go try again. Lord, really, show me this time. And he opened it up and said, go and do thou likewise. <laughs> He quit doing it after that. He realized, this is not God speaking to me. So test them and make sure. Um, does it line up with the Bible? Is what the person saying helpful in building up the body of Christ? Or is it tearing it down? Let me bring this, uh, this abstract a little bit into a more concrete application. Consider the charismatic gifts. That would be, by, by that I mean speaking in languages that you never studied, that you don't know. The gift of tongues. The, the, the early disciples did this. They spoke, but they spoke in languages that people actually understood. A lot of the gift of tongues these days is ecstatic utterances that maybe are the language of angels, but we don't know because no one really <laughs> knows what the language is. That's one of them. Or uh, prophecies about the future. Or about things that are going on in secret in someone's life. They may say, oh... The Lord told me that you're doing this, and you know, that kind of thing. Or it might be a healing touch, the power of healing. We are not supposed to scoff at these things, but we need to test them. Teaching and preaching are also gifts of the Spirit, as well as generosity and hospitality and helping. We all have gifts of the Spirit, but these that I mentioned, the, the tongues and the healing and the prophecy and that, those are considered in the charismatic realm. In regard to those, there are two extremes that we need to watch out for. One extreme is basing your whole Christian experience on charismatic gifts. There's one group I know of that believes that unless a person speaks in tongues, some language that they don't know themselves, they just some ecstatic utterance, unless they do that, they're not really saved. That's proof that they're Christian. And without that, then they're not. The other extreme, though, is to put the damper on it and say, no, all of that stopped with the apostles. When the last disciple of Jesus died, all of those special gifts of the Spirit were gone. We don't have them anymore. That would be the other extreme. None, neither of those views is completely correct. Because those gifts, those charismatic gifts even, apparently come these days but they are not the main things we're living for. I rejoice when I see genuine acts of God in this way, but I'm also wary of false attempts. God doesn't just do what we ask him to do if we have enough faith. Paul the Apostle, who wrote much of the New Testament, had a thorn in his flesh, a physical ailment, and he said three times I asked God to heal me of this, to take it from me. And each time God said, no, my grace is enough for you. I'm going to work in you through this ailment. So he didn't get what he wanted. And he was, if Paul couldn't do it, then who, you know, who could? It's easy to get caught up in thinking that you can have whatever you want from God in this life. If you just have enough faith. People still fall for this lie of the devil. And that's pretty strong words on my part. I don't usually condemn things, but it really irritates me. <laughs> this is one of those things that irritate me. When people will say things like this, and if you only believe enough, you can have whatever you want. 
That's not biblical. That's not from God. Sometimes God does bless us. I mean, we may pray for health and healing, and it comes. Or we may have a real difficult financial situation we're in, and we pray for God to help us through it, and he does, and he blesses us, especially as we follow his biblical stewardship. There was a place that was less than 30 miles from where I lived out my teen years, where I grew up from 10 on, that was called the Glory Barn. And I checked this out, and there's still an international glory barn. I don't think they're affiliated, but they still have the same idea. It's this name it and claim it. At this glory barn, they believed that all Christians who had enough faith could receive any miracle from God that they needed or wanted. People who had vision problems were encouraged to pray for healing of their eyes and in faith get rid of their glasses and then go out driving on the road. <laughs> um, others were told not to take medical treatment for illnesses that they had, that God would heal them by faith. Eventually, the truth came out that a lot of the supposed miracles never really happened. A good friend of mine, his parents got involved in this place, and his father died because of a disease that was untreated because he was a man of faith, believing that he would get healed because of this cult. The county nurse reported to the uh, county health board, and it was, it was written up in our, our newspaper, in the Warsaw Times Union. She says, she went and saw what was going on. She said, diabetics were not taking their insulin, and pregnant women were receiving no prenatal or postnatal care. They're laying dead babies and live babies next to each other on their altars and praying over them to get the live babies to bring life back to the dead ones. There was one woman in our county praying over a dead baby for four days before the funeral home got hold of it. Now these were good and earnest people. They were sincere but they were led to believe lies decked out to look like God's word. Jesus, when he sent his disciples out to witness, he said, be as innocent as doves, that means in doing evil, but as wise as serpents, that means in discerning what's going on and what is true and what is right. Watch out what you hear and what you believe. Satan is a master deceiver. And that's why we come together on Sundays and study the word together. And that's why I encourage you to read the Bible on your own and to think about it and pray about it. And maybe read a study guide or a commentary to help you understand the more difficult parts. Test everything, that, test everything against what the Bible says. And then use your spirit also. Is this building up the body of Christ and deepening our love for one another? Or is it error and bringing division in the body and shame on our witness? So as we wrap up 1 Thessalonians here, remember these one, two, three, four important things. Keep rejoicing. Keep praying always. Keep being faithful. Be receptive to the Holy Spirit's work, but also be wise and discerning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you that you do send our spirit to uh, your spirit to us. Help us not to quench your spirit, but to always be sensitive to you and your leading. And Lord, we seek you. We want to spend time quiet and alone with you for you to lead us and teach us. We want to base this on your word, Lord. So help us to have remembrance of those verses that are important for us in the various situations we are in our lives and teach us through them. Deepen us and grow us in our faith, Lord, and also in our knowledge and in our discernment. And may we give you glory. Thank you for the good that you are doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Dan. You get you uh, have the 
these little the children's messages are really you, I don't know how you can get all these coming up. <laughs> but every one of them's worked perfectly. <laughs> well, thank you for being here and uh, thank you for singing along with us and everything. Um, remember now we have a, a fellowship meal right after this. So don't be running into McDonald's or something like that. No, you might as well stay with us. I'll fly away. That's the that's be great. Uh, five five four in your hymnal. So let's stand and sing. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Marie, for singing for playing and singing. Sing them together. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.